The card we're going to talk about today is somehow three magic cards at once. How the hell does that work? <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. Man, do we have an interesting card to talk about today. The more I looked at it, the more I found. So let's get it up on the screen so we know what we're talking about today. It is nesting dragon now there's a lot going on here it is two red and three colors for a five four flying dragon with landfall now before we take a look at this one's landfall ability let's take a peek at the other landfall dragon they made in the past because he's a little more disappointing so we can be a little more excited about this guy or i guess this lady so two black too black good god i didn't get enough sleep man you guys have no idea how many times i screwed up the intro to this video Twice. Really not that many times. All right. Two red, four colors for a 4-4 four, four flyer with landfall. Whenever a land comes in the battlefield under your control, this dragon does one damage to a target of your choice. Or, if it's a mountain that's coming out, it does two damage instead. And that's just a 4-4 four, four for six. So, that's the only other landfall red dragon that they have. And honestly, it's not, it's not super exciting. Uh, it's just kind of like panned it. So, this one is much better. 5 mana nets you a 5-4 flyer, so already it costs one less and has one boost of power. And the landfall ability is something I like a lot more. So, let's break this down. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 0-2 red dragon egg creature token with defender. And, whenever this creature dies, create a 2-2 red dragon creature token with flying. And, this creature gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Now, what I absolutely love about this is it's called nesting dragon and you have like nested text here basically in the quotation marks you have it nested and on top of that if you really want to geek out you've got double quotations and single quotations inside of the double quotation block you have the number two showing up twice and inside of the singular quotation block you have the number one showing up one time i love things like that that that's really cool but anyways this is this card right here is basically three magic cards all by itself. It creates dragon eggs, which are an individual magic card, obviously, that was created back in an earlier core set. So they had it back in uh, core 2014, was the first place that dragon egg showed up in. And hilariously enough, well, I guess first let's actually talk about the dragon egg before I talk about what's funny about it. One red and two colors for a 0-2 defender. When it dies, you put a 2-2 dragon creature token with flying onto the battlefield, and it has. This creature gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn for every red that you spend. So, it's exactly the same. This dragon egg is exactly what's being created by the nesting dragon. Now, that's pretty cool. And the, the crazy thing about the dragon egg is that's represented on a magic card, but the token that the dragon egg makes is also represented in a magic card. And that's Furnace Web, which is two red, two colors for a 2-2 flyer that pumps for red. It gets plus one, plus zero. So you can actually just use real magic cards. If you wanted to, instead of using the tokens, you could use real magic cards. There's three magic cards inside this one magic card. You get the Dragon Egg, which then cracks into the Furnace Web. Now, there's a lot of rules text tucked up into this card. It's very, very flavorful. And another neat little note some of you may have noticed is that on the M14 version, if you look at the creature type line, it just says dragon. But if you notice in nesting dragon, it says create a 0-2 red dragon egg creature token. And when you look at the updated version of dragon egg for M19, lo and behold, egg has been made a creature type. Now this is pretty cool because this all stems back, for those of you who don't know, to tie it into the original. It comes from Rook Egg. Rook Egg was a card from Arabian Nights, one red, three colors, for a 0-3 creature. When it dies, you get a 4-4 four, four flying Rook token. And that was the original concept for this. This is where the eggs came from. They also did Rock Egg, which was the white version, but that's uh, it's, it's mainly just a red thing they have going on there. But I thought it was neat that they included the egg type. So back to Dragon Egg in the exact same set. Now keep in mind, this Dragon Egg, right? As soon as the dragon hatches, it's 2-2, two, two, right? So in the exact same set as the Dragon Egg comes out, Dragon Hatchling is printed, and this is one red, one colorless, and it's a 0-1 flyer that gets plus one, plus zero for every red you spend. And it's genuinely baffling. 
because it was printed in the exact same set as the dragon egg. Why would you do this? Things need to make sense. Speaking of things making sense, the tokens for this nesting dragon, they specifically have uh, basically the egg on one side and the dragon on the other. So you can flip from one side to another. The artwork is really cool. Um, what's, what's messed up to me though, is that the artwork on the dragon egg token specifically ties to the nesting dragon. You can see that the mouth that's breaking through, the snout that's busting through the egg there, is totally matching the actual dragon. It's done by the same artwork, uh, same artist, I should say. The same artist did the nesting dragon and the dragon egg. But when you flip it over and look at the dragon, the dragon side was done by a different artist, and the dragon doesn't even seem to have the right coloration. And that kind of stuff, that's that's annoying to me. I feel like I feel like that's a huge mistake. I don't I don't like that uh, that sort of issue. But anyways, the there's a really horrific undertone to this card and it's it's it, it's really troubling honestly and it for for you to understand this you need to understand what we are as people who play this game as planeswalkers but first let's take a look at the concept of the dragon obviously overall as it's conveyed in the artwork so you have the dragon there and it is obviously it's a female dragon it is guarding its its brood of eggs there it's it's guarding its babies and the concept behind this is basically Every time a new land comes into play, this dragon is taking one of these eggs from this nest and transporting it over to those lands, basically, I suppose, so that the baby could theoretically have the ability to, uh, to like, reign over those lands. That would be like, the, in the under natural conditions, that's what this nesting dragon would be like, if this landfall ability would represent the dragon going out and finding different territories and putting the eggs there so that when the dragon hatches, they have their own territory to feed on. But that's not what's going on for us. You need to understand, a lot of people seem to have forgotten this, but the game of Magic, we are, as two players, we are massive epic level planeswalkers. We travel to all these different planes of existence, and we find these different creatures that we can use to do battle with each other. Like, every game of Magic is a titanic clash between two planeswalkers struggling for dominion. They could be fighting over any number of things, okay? And the way that they accumulate their resources is they go to different worlds and they tap into the lands there and they enslave the creatures there. That's what every single planeswalker does. You need to understand that. It doesn't matter if they're a white aligned, order aligned, none of that. So they have different motives for why they do what they do. If you break it down, basically even a, like a white mage who would be oh i don't want to enslave life is going to be greater good aspected where it's like okay let's take a look at the overall world universe multiverse where it's like how much does an individual life form matter on one plane of existence when there are threats that will wipe out all of existence like if you have to fight against nicol bolas or the eldrazi these massive sort of threats are you really going to be concerned about the life of a horse or a particular person from a from a planet no the greater good demands that you basically just override their will creatures that wizards summon that the planeswalkers summon in magic the gathering are bound to you well they are not free creatures some of them have more ability and more freedom and they demand things from you or damage you and they're not as easily controllable but overall the concept behind the game has always been that you've enslaved these creatures they are bound to your will and you use them as you see fit. Now, creatures get healed up at the end of turn, but here's what a lot of people don't get. Those cards in your deck, they just represent different versions. Like if you have four nesting dragons in your deck as cards, those would represent four different nesting dragons that you actually went out and found existing on, in this case, it would be the plane of Zendikar. You can actually see from the nest that the Hedrons there mean that it's from Zendikar, but you would have gone to Zendikar and found multiple, multiple spawned versions of these nesting dragons that had grown up and lived on that world and basically enslaved them, right? And if these dragons die, they're gone forever. Like white, some white, some white planeswalkers have the ability to resurrect their creatures. Uh, but if you go and read the old novels and things like that, when these titanic duels between planeswalkers happened, the losers had to flee before dying a lot of the time. It's like they're about to get killed by the other planeswalker. So they just flee and they abandoned their summoned creatures. They lose the links to those creatures and those creatures are basically no good to them anymore. They're dead and gone or whatever. They're not going to get any healing. They're left limp, used up, abandoned on whatever plane. It's not an orderly returning everything where you put it like you board it from the library style environment. We're all crazy power hungry planeswalkers for whatever reasons and we've gone out 
and enslaved these creatures to our will, and they die as a result of this. And they're aware of their existences. They're aware that they're slaves and can't do anything about it. They're aware that the magic binds them, okay? So this nesting dragon, this is a dragon that was found with its brood of eggs. This is just, this is insane. So this mother has all of her eggs and she's just trying to, she's just trying to grow her babies and bring them out into the world. And then comes along, boom, gets enslaved by a planeswalker, summoned to different planes of existence. And whenever a new, a new land is summoned up, like a link to another land is summoned up and it's like, go lay an egg, go put not lay an egg there. Take one of the eggs that you've been hearing from your brood and go and place it there. And basically she's just forced to take her eggs out there knowing what's going to happen. Any of the babies that hatch out of these eggs are going to be enslaved by the same planeswalker, right? They're going to be tools just used and cast aside. This nesting dragon would have seen multiple of her own youth callously used and cast aside, abandoned, possibly just completely destroyed, obliterated to all kinds of different magic, just sometimes even just thrown in the way. Some gigantic lumbering creature is coming to attack the planeswalker and the, one of these dragons is mentally compelled to just, one of her babies is just mentally compelled to just fly right in the way, just boom, splattered, barely got any time to live. And this dragon is kept as a prisoner, returned either to her home plane of existence or to some special pocket dimension in the meantime between uses where she basically is magically compelled to create more and lay more and more of these eggs for this wizard's unending campaign of power. This, and they're aware of it. It's not like their minds are wiped, completely aware of their own slavery, constantly being forced to birth out their own progeny that will be sacrificed in an endless war for power by something so powerful that like planeswalkers, calling a planeswalker a god isn't even an apt enough description. Because as planeswalkers, we can control and summon gods from other planes of existence. We're so powerful, we can pull gods from other planes of existence. And we take dragons, dragons, majestic, epic beings, and we reduce their lives to this, essentially being a chicken. You take this dragon and you turn it into a chicken and force it to wash its own progeny die not out of any malice not out of trying to show it anything and go look i can dominate you this way just as a side effect of being a planeswalker and the quest for power it's horrific and it's epic and the flavor of this card is amazing to me so let me know what you guys think and thanks for coming by we'll see you next time oh you thought i was gone but i had to come back for a moment because i have to welcome my newest Golden, Lord of Purple, thank you, Daniel Martin, for hopping on board and joining my Patreon. We will see you in the end scroll. I'm becoming a beautiful singing lady. And together, we are the sixth color of Mike and Ice. Wait, we're talking about the Magic Historian, Mike's YouTube channel? I take it all back! <laughs>